Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to discuss the energies of transiting Jupiter in Pisces. We will look at the themes of Jupiter moving into Pisces, which happens on May 13th, 2021, where Jupiter will stay in Pisces for only two and a half months before returning to Aquarius, where it will stay until December 29th, 2021. Then we will see this Jupiter in Pisces fully enter Pisces again and stay in Pisces until May 2022, where it enters Aries and actually travels pretty fast up to nearly nine degrees of Aries, where it then backtracks into Pisces once more in October 2022 and then returns back to Aries in December 2022. Now, I wanted to give you this lay of the land, so to speak, how this Jupiter in Pisces energy is working with us because it truly feels like waves, waves of energy coming in and then removing itself and then coming back in and removing itself again. And it feels like this Jupiter in Pisces is truly gifting us with the opportunity to cleanse, to deeply release but not all at once, since it comes in to Pisces in 2021 for only two and a half months and then goes back into the mental workings of Aquarius. Now, typically when Jupiter is in an astrological sign, it will stay there for a full year or so, and this includes a retrograde period. And we will have a year of Jupiter in a sign and then it moves on to the next sign. So typically it's linear and there's a very clear understanding that Jupiter stays in one sign, then moves forward. But I find it really fascinating how the universe is working with Jupiter at this time where we are working with these waves, we are seeing the energy ebb and flow, and it's really quite lovely considering how Pisces is connected to the ocean and how the ocean ebbs and flows. And the ocean obviously has its big waves and its small waves that hit the shore. And I feel like what we're understanding here with Jupiter and Pisces is that it's going to be easier to let go and maybe it will feel smoother. Maybe there will be some ease or some grace with this cleansing energy as it comes in and works with us. Now, Jupiter was last in Pisces in 2010, and at that time, it did go into Aries and then return back into Pisces until early 2011. But the energy was really strong throughout 2010. So since 2010, we haven't had this Jupiter expansive energy in this part of your chart. So what I invite you to do is to identify where you have 0 to 29 degrees of Pisces, and as Jupiter comes through, Jupiter expands this energy of Pisces. Jupiter is known as a benefactor. It helps us see what we're learning. What have I been growing and understanding in this area of my life? And as Jupiter comes through this part of your chart, only every 12 years, only every 12 years, it shows you more of your own growth, what you've been understanding where you need support, where Jupiter can make things flow and open up. There can be more opportunities here and things can be easier in this part of your life. So that's one of the reasons why we always love to see what Jupiter is up to because it brings in abundance and manifestations related to that astrological sign. Now, because astrology is a progression of energy, we can see that as Jupiter has been in Aquarius, there's been a lot of mental work and stimuli. There's been a lot happening in our higher minds, in our ability to contemplate the future, where we're going, what our vision is, the people we connect with. I feel like the Jupiter in Aquarius energy has helped to raise our vibrations and show us what is true for us at this time 
This is often an inspiring energy that wants to connect with people, be it a soul tribe, a community, online groups. You want to find people of like mind where you share a similar passion or interest. I love how Aquarius rules astrology and there's been a rise in astrology. So here we have this Jupiter and Aquarius really activating our social connections, uh, where we want to spend our time, what feels good, and opportunities to connect with other people of like mind. Now, as the energy moves into Pisces, this is where we relax. The mind relaxes. We can perhaps exhale and lean back and allow a process to unfold where we're not going to force it. We're not going to make it happen. There's a sense here of divine timing coming through in Pisces. So we move from the mental intensity and focus of Aquarius into the privacy and the base that Pisces requires in order to fully integrate, to fully feel something. We tap into our intuition and our emotions. Pisces is a water sign. So we move into other parts of ourselves that are now going to feel really supported through this Jupiter energy. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and it's where we experience detachment, where we step back and say, okay, hands off. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm going to trust this. I'm going to give it up to spirit, God, source, the universe, and allow things to unfold. We release our grip on what we want. Pisces is also where we detach from our self-identity at an ego level where we have our wants and our desires, but we know that we are human beings with our own energy vessels interacting with bigger energy systems, bigger energy cycles. And in Pisces, those bigger energy cycles are more dominant. And when we can accept that and work with that, then we can have even more miracles or developments happen that our human selves couldn't plan, couldn't decide, or couldn't be in charge of. So this is why Pisces is truly about trust. Trust what you can't see. Trust what's coming together. Trust the wonders of the world, of these energy cycles. And also trust that you are being taken care of even when you're not quote unquote in charge. So we have some growth here that will be prominent through the Jupiter in Pisces cycles, and we're going to have them show up in different phases. Now, as I said, Jupiter enters Pisces in the middle of May, 2021, where it stays until the end of July, specifically July 28th, 2021, two and a half months of really understanding what this means to lean back and trust and to feel good about it. Now, Pisces is also where we're letting go and we're forgiving. So there could be something that is removed from your, I'm going to say concern from your plate. If something's been a burden on your mind, if something's been stressful or causing that mind and the energy to really get going, like you've had a lot of anxiety about it, you could feel a release here where your energy shifts and you say, you know, it's okay if I don't know the answer. It's okay if I don't know how this is going to play out or what's going to show up. I'm good. I'm going to keep living my life. I've got this covered. I'm just not going to put so much towards it, so much focal point towards it. Because what this Jupiter and Pisces energy is going to do is it's going to help us see perhaps a bigger picture which is one of the gifts of Jupiter. What's the bigger picture of all of this? What's the bigger picture of what you've been spiritually growing and where you've had to trust? I feel like what we're doing too is that as this energy comes through, we're going to feel something within ourselves at a cellular level calm down. It's like a settling down. It's like, oh, I don't have to be so frantic or active about this. Oh, I don't have to do it all and talk it through and really put all this energy towards it. There's a softening, a softening in our energy fields that I really feel at a physical level, again, at that cellular DNA level where I'm going to just relax. I'm going to flow into this and I'm going to trust these waves as they come through and as they show up for me. So there is truly beautiful support 
for how you can calm down your mind, calm down your body, calm down the ego, and just allow yourself to tap into these higher energies that you are. And so we can feel a deeper connection to spirit. We can feel a deeper connection to our higher selves. You can look back on your life and see at how things showed up for you that you couldn't have planned, that you couldn't have organized or managed. That's also Jupiter and Pisces is something comes through and you're like, oh my goodness, I was waiting on this or I was hoping this would happen. And again, this could be something from say two or three years ago. This could be something that maybe you've forgotten about. And now here comes Jupiter with all his gifts and opportunities and says, now's the time. So keep in mind that the more we trust and we remove our energy from a particular outcome, the more that energy opens up. And when we can trust that, when we can trust the opening of energy and allow there to be a void to be filled, that's when we can see a new manifestation show up or something arrive uh, in divine timing in a way that really supports where you're at right now and who you are right now. So keep in mind, Jupiter has not been in Pisces since 2010. And you may be able to think back at that time in your life and look at what transpired for you then based on where in your natal astrology chart, Jupiter in Pisces is traveling. Now, it could be traveling through one house or two houses or three houses. It depends how your houses in your chart are divided and does depend on which house system you use. But this Jupiter energy is going to bring in bigger energy into these parts of your life. Now, Jupiter used to be the ruler of Pisces, and this was before Neptune was discovered. And so Jupiter does very well in Pisces. And it is about the growth. It's about the higher perspective. It's where we hold ideals. Uh, Perhaps they're not grounded, but they give us a sense of hope and possibility. It's a very creative energy, uh, very much about the arts, creativity, music, uh, where you can escape some of the burdens and trappings of the physical world, and you can do something enjoyable, do something fun. Uh, You can really follow what calls to you. This will be a beautiful period of time to also develop your intuition, to really go into more of your spiritual gifts, to trust the parts of you that perhaps you've been feeling or they've been hinting at you, and now you might feel inspired to really develop these parts of yourself more. Pisces is the energy of escapism. Again, when we want to take a break from the nine to five, we want to take a break from our reality. Pisces invites us into other realms, other places. Uh, This is also the energy of meditation, guided meditation, astral travel, the places we go when we sleep or when we nap, the other areas we have access to outside of the linear mind outside of where we can all we can always touch and taste and feel this is where we go where we sense energies and because of that you could feel more energetically sensitive and this is something to work with uh, where you can work with what it means to trust what you're feeling or trust what you're sensing You could feel that you're more empathic, uh, whether you identify as an empath or whether you're just understanding how people feel. There can be energy here connected to picking up more messages. I also feel that this Jupiter in Pisces is going to help cleanse our auras. And if you think of that Pisces energy as the waves coming through, cleansing us and allowing us to remove what we're done with, I feel like whatever we've been unconsciously holding in our energy fields since 2011, 2011, it's going to be easier to remove it or to let it go. And this could be something to stay mindful of and to stay aware of that maybe there's parts of your experience, uh, parts of your heart, parts of your mind, parts of your body, just parts of you that have been stuck or kind of not fully processed If you've been holding a grudge, if you've been holding resentment or any types of lower energies within you about any kind of incident, experience, or relationship in your life, and keep in mind this could be something 
from any time in your life. And in fact, it could be from all lifetimes. It could be one of your soul themes or what you're learning. There's something here where the energy is asking us to deeply let go. And it's also supported by the Neptune in Pisces energies that we've been working with since 2011. So we have these themes showing up of unraveling, undoing, removing, and allowing there to be more space in our energy field for new experiences. But this Jupiter in Pisces is asking us to tap into the kindness in our own hearts. And I feel it as well in the higher heart. And the higher heart is where we hold spiritual energies. The human heart being where we have our human emotions, our human experiences, and energies that are related to our our humanness. The higher heart is connected to the higher self energy, and it reminds us of forgiveness and compassion. It reminds us that we're never going to be perfect. We're never going to get it right all the time. We we make mistakes. Uh, We unintentionally hurt people, or we get hurt by others. Uh, There's the energy here where the higher heart I feel it as this energy that maintains a higher frequency and vibration that we tap into when we're ready to forgive and let go. When we're ready to say, okay, I understood that they aren't perfect or they made a choice or they said some words that were hurtful, but I know that's not who they are. And I know that I am loved and lovable regardless of anything outside of me. So this Jupiter in Pisces, as it connects to the higher heart energy, we could feel that softening towards others as well as towards ourselves. We could feel ourselves being in acceptance of what is. And knowing that one of the beautiful things about our journeys and our lives is that there are multiple ways to experience miracles, multiple ways to create an amazing life for ourselves. that your life journey is never about just one thing. It's never about just getting one perfect job or connecting with one perfect soulmate for you. You know, if they make other choices or they're not ready or they're not interested or they're not wanting the relationship, the universe brings in someone who is ready, someone who does want what you want, that does want to create or co-create with you that's mutual. You're on the same page. You're on the same frequency. So there's never just one path. And in our giant energetic playground, there's multiple paths, multiple possibilities, multiple ways that we can create the life of our dreams. If you hold that belief system, which is Jupiter, if you hold that vibration, that frequency, and if that's truly what you want in your life. So the Jupiter in Pisces can help you let go of disappointments, of where you've been sad, of where you have felt let down. It can help you cleanse out any victim consciousness energy, which our egos might not want to fully own. You know, we don't want to look at maybe where you felt like a victim or where you've had pity or blame or something happened that it feels like it took you out of your power or away from your power. In which case that reveals what you're learning, how you're growing and how you're ready to reprogram that to see where your power is. But this Jupiter and Pisces can help us with these higher perspectives. It can help us tap into what you know at a soul level you've been learning and where that information can come in quickly, where that wisdom can come through and it just connects and you're like, oh my goodness, I get it now. I see the pattern. I see the habits. I see my own unconsciousness. I see where I wasn't you know, fully aware of the whole picture, where I was missing something. So we can have peace. We can have peace around ourselves and around others. We can have peace and be in acceptance of where others are at. And so you can look at someone in your life. uh, Maybe you've had this relationship with them or there's someone in your family. They're a coworker. uh, They're a parent. They're a child. Someone in your life that maybe 
has really been pushing you triggering every single button triggering buttons you didn't even know you had and then really bringing you into more of yourself, right? Like, oh, I didn't know I'd be so pissed about this or I didn't realize I'd be so hurt. My heart hurts and I wasn't expecting that. Or I'm really sad, I'm really disappointed. I thought this was gonna be something or I thought we were going to be together or I thought that this person and I were growing together. I mean, we can have all these thoughts, right? And we see the overlaps in our energy with another person's energy. And in this Pisces energies, those overlaps can be really blurry. There can be a lack of understanding what's your energy and what's not your energy. And I feel like when these overlaps happen, when it's blurry and foggy and fuzzy, and you're like, oh my goodness, what's going on? It just looks like a mess, a mess of energy. This Jupiter energy says, go higher, go higher, go higher and look at what you are learning. What is the theme for you? What is important for you to understand? Because when you claim that for yourself, you're tapping into your own soul wisdom. And it's also going to make the boundaries clearer, which is something Pisces energy is learning, is learning about boundaries, uh, learning where to have boundaries, but understanding that you are your own energetic vessel, You are responsible for you and where to ensure that you're claiming who you are, what you are, your own learning, your own processes, your own needs, and you're allowing another person to do the same. And one of the exercises that I think can be very useful is that when you start to see what's yours and what's not yours, is that you can then send that energy back to that other person with consciousness and love. And that is the way to raise the energy. That is how you can heal it for yourself. And that's also how you honor their own sovereignty. You honor their own free will. You honor that, okay, they're going to choose what's best for them or do what's best for them. It's not personal. It's not about me. I don't have to absorb it or take it on. So this is where we're going to be learning about boundaries, learning about energetic boundaries, and learning how to take care of yourself as you rise in your own consciousness of your own soul lessons and soul growth. Now, I feel this is a very important theme because Jupiter in Pisces is going to be following in the footsteps of Neptune in Pisces. Neptune came into Pisces 2011, and it's staying there until 2026. So this Jupiter is coming through and really bringing up how well you've been allowing transitions to happen, how well you've been adaptable to change, how well you've been trusting, trusting yourself, trusting what's complete for you, the letting go, the release, and how you can strengthen your ability to trust what you feel, that your intuition is an important message, your emotions are important messages, what you're receiving or feeling from your guides, angels, spirit source are also important messages. These are all under the realms of Pisces. So this Neptune in Pisces has been working with us in our ability to connect to these energies that we can't see, but we feel and we sense. And at the same time, this Jupiter in Pisces is going to come through and cover the territory that Chiron in Pisces also moved through from about May 2010 until March 2019. So essentially the whole last decade. The last decade is when we had Chiron in Pisces. And Chiron, known as the Wounded Healer, brings up our fears, doubts, and insecurities, brings up our vulnerabilities where we look at where we've been wobbly in our intuition, where we've been afraid to trust and uncertain about what we can trust. This Chiron in Pisces uh, would have been, of course, working with Neptune in Pisces as well. So last decade, there was a lot of Pisces energy in terms of both Chiron and Neptune in this part of your chart. Now Jupiter comes through, and it's gonna give you understandings about what last decade showed you. 
And it's pretty fascinating how it's broken up neatly, neatly into a whole decade. That isn't always the case. But what was it about last decade that you were afraid to trust, afraid to follow? Where were you not hearing something? Where did you not trust your gut, trust your instincts? Because part of Pisces shows up as regrets. It shows up as our own disappointments where we realize, oh, I I knew that or I felt that but I didn't believe it or I didn't trust it. Oftentimes in Pisces, there are human questions, but spiritual answers. The mind asks a question. Should I do this? Should I move here? Should I do, should I go over this way? Should I try for this job? Should I ask this person out? Should I send my child to this school? Should I, should I, you know, you ask all these questions from the conscious mind. Pisces gives you an answer that's intuitive. You feel it. You feel a yes. You feel a no. You feel wait. Let's just wait. It's not time yet. Let's wait. So you get the answer from spirit. But do you trust that answer? Because the mind can override it. The mind can find doubts or the mind can look for something to prove itself, to prove the answer or searches for the details, the specifics, the steps. When we have strong Pisces energy, it's a feeling. And you can feel it in the body. You can feel it in your intuition. You can feel it through your emotions. You can feel it as your energy rises. You can rise in a yes, or you can feel it sink in a no. Or perhaps it works differently for you, in which case trust however you feel it. But the answers come outside of the mind. It comes through the energy and your intuition. Maybe it comes through a dream. Maybe it's something you see in meditation or you tap into. Maybe there's a higher knowingness or feeling that surges through you. This is the Pisces energy. And I feel like this Jupiter in Pisces is going to show you something from last decade that maybe you didn't trust, you didn't follow or pursue, you didn't say yes. And that's okay because in the world of spirit, There's always another way, another path, another solution, another opportunity, uh, someone else, something else, another job. There's always more in the world of spirit. There's always more because there's unlimited energy. And when you tap into that as part of your belief system, then you open up to even more than, again, what you could have planned. So Jupiter is our belief systems. It's how we form our truth and our truth systems. And throughout your life, you probably have different truths. You know, you had your favorite toy when you were five. This is my favorite toy. And then perhaps later when you were in adulthood, that changed. No judgment if it did not. But there's a sense of now this is my truth, or now this is what I want. Now this is what I believe. So here we are with our evolving truth systems Our evolving belief systems, if you choose to evolve your belief system, because not everybody does, but the idea is that there's more to understand, there's more to trust, there's more to know, but it does take us out of our typical human faculties. It takes us out of the mind, out of the physical, out of what we want to know. Uh, There's lack of certainty in the humanness, but there's huge knowingness in spirit. So we're going to have opportunities to trust spirit and trust ourselves in a very big way. Now Pisces is a feminine energy and it's related to how we receive what we feel and also perhaps needing more downtime or quiet time. I think that sounds a little ironic considering the global lockdown and that maybe we've already had enough time to ourselves. But this is going to be a balancing energy of where we get out of our minds, where we get out of where we've been directing our energy towards, come back to ourselves and tap into what we feel. And again, I feel it in the higher heart, which energetically is up in the upper back behind the shoulder blades. So in the upper central back, And you could feel energy moving there. You could feel you want to move energy there. Even just the simple stretching of the back, the arms, 
the neck. Uh, opening the chest. There's this expansive energies in our hearts where we're able to accept what is and accept who we are, but I also feel it as an acceptance of who we of who we have been, an acceptance of what it means to move through some of these big life lessons and big life themes, what it means even through the energy of contrast. Because what they're showing me, what my guides are showing me, is that sometimes in order to learn trusting ourselves and believing our intuition and opening our hearts or feeling what is going on in our emotional world, we sometimes are directed into that part of ourselves through contrast. Meaning through the times we did not trust ourselves or we did not honor what's in our hearts or we did not choose what we felt good about, but the mind said, no, go this way instead. This is more certain. This is what you know. This is something that you can count on. And this can also be times in your life when you talked yourself out of something, or there was a fear around not knowing all the details or not knowing how something would work or how would this come together? Or, you know, I love this dream job, but it's in a whole nother state or a whole nother city, a whole nother country. I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that would come together. And when we have Jupiter and Pisces, you don't have to worry about the details. Things will come together. Things will show up for you if that's what you believe, if you're willing to trust at that level. And so it looks like there could be opportunities here in 2021 into 2022 to perhaps trust yourself even more than you did last decade and to look at where you're ready to strengthen these parts of yourself. And it's a partnership with spirit. It's a partnership that we, the humans, have to agree to. It has to be our willingness and our free will that says, yes, I want to try this again or I'm ready to experience something new or I want to do something differently this time around. I'm ready. I'm ready to trust more. I'm ready to go bigger because I know that no matter what happens, spirit has me. I am supported. I will always be supported in everything I do. Try that as something you practice regularly, that you tell yourself, you tell your mind. I will always be supported in everything that feels good to me, that feels correct for me. I am supported in a leap of faith. I am supported in taking a risk. I am supported in following a new path. I'm supported even when I'm scared and I don't know what's going to happen and I'm afraid, afraid of being vulnerable, afraid of being hurt, afraid of being rejected, afraid of being abandoned. These are all messages that we have inside of us because we want to stay safe. It's a very primal energy that we each carry where I want to be safe. I want to have food on the table. I need protection from the outside weather. You know, we have this parts of ourself that wants to remain safe. And then it shows up through all areas of ourselves. It can show up in your finances when you're making financial decisions. It can show up in your emotional self and in your relationships. It can show up in your job, in your work, how you express yourself in the world. We want that sense of safety. But as we evolve in our own consciousness, we understand that we carry that within us, that that is a foundational energy that travels with you of I am always safe and I'm always equipped with figuring out what I need to do next. I've got this. I have it. I understand that I will be supported if I go down path A. I will be equally supported if I go down path B. The difference is in the energies of path A and path B and whether you are connecting with those energies from the fullness of who you are, which is your intuition, your physical self, your spiritual self, your mind, your emotional self, or if you're only connecting from the mind or from the body or from a place of safety or only from the ego. Typically, when you're making a choice, you're choosing between two different energies, whether that's two different energy expressions or two different things that call to you. Not that one is 
right and one is wrong necessarily. It's rarely that simple, but they're speaking to you at different levels of your energy. And typically the stronger energy is coming from whatever choice is connecting to all of your energy or more of your energy. Again, not just the mind, not just a mental decision. So this could be something that you play with or you explore, uh, you experiment with. I mean, it can be so simple to practice this in the grocery store when you're choosing between, you know, two types of food or two things that you want for dinner. And you're like, oh, what calls to all of my energy here in the deli section or the frozen food section or the produce section? I mean, this is where you start small with trusting what speaks to you, trusting what your feeling is correct for you. So you can start small and practice it in little ways. See how it plays out. And again, do it through contrast. Look back on your life. Look at last decade. Look at last year. Where did you not trust? And what happened? Or how did it play out? Or how did it show up? And know that there's no wrong at a spiritual level. There's just another path. There's just another choice, another energy, another thing to follow. And so what would you choose? What would you follow from a place of fully trusting yourself, what you want, what you need? Uh, Perhaps it's sort of like this energy of you're trusting all of the messages you're receiving and you're not giving the mind all of the decision-making ability. And this is something that is taught through human design for those of you who are familiar with human design, is that it's tapping into your body consciousness. What is your body wanting to do? Where's the energy showing up for you to move in the body? Again, not in the mind, because we've all been conditioned to use our minds, you know, as we should. Although there could be a fair argument for those who do not use their minds. Um, But what we're practicing here is your body consciousness, your intuitive consciousness, your spiritual consciousness, and the wonders that can show up when you follow that. And they're reminding me of the times in my life when I've done this. And I rarely talk about my books on the podcast because I forget to mention them. And I don't like being salesy. But my book, uh, The Art of Trapeze, is when I moved to Paris. And talk about a leap of faith. I've never been to Paris I knew no one. I had nowhere to live. I was literally showing up with my four suitcases. And by the way, this was 2005. So there was no social media. There was nothing fancy on our phones back in 2005. It was making phone calls. That's how you use the phone. I was making phone calls and the classified ads looking for a place to live, looking, how am I going to make this happen? And it was so blind faith. It was so like, this might not happen at all. But at least I got to see Charles de Gaulle Airport and I got to go around the town. But then things showed up. Things showed up in a big way, in a stronger way. And it was only by taking it one step at a time and trusting myself that it showed up. And yes, it's terrifying. Yes, it's something that the mind will override. I had a lot of fears. I had a lot of anxiety. I can't downplay it because it was so big to me. It was so important that I experienced this and it showed up. It showed up through trusting it. It showed up through allowing. And this is how you can experience the biggest parts of your life is through allowing. Again, leaning back, exhaling, allowing things to support you, allowing divine timing to occur. And it's by that allowing that the energy opens up where maybe previously your mind was all about it, right? Your mind is like, I'm going to take care of this and manage this and organize this. But Jupiter and Pisces, step out of your head, get out of your mind and look at where your energy is so much bigger than you realized. So this is going to be one of our ongoing experiences here in 2021 into 2022. Now, let me give you those dates again. And of course, I will be talking about it regularly on the podcast as we move through these energies. So Jupiter enters Pisces on May 13th, 2021, and will travel to two degrees of Pisces and then retrograde back to Aquarius, July 28th, 2021. 
Then Jupiter will enter Pisces again, December 29th, 2021, and travel through all 30 degrees of Pisces until May 10th, 2022. Then it will enter Aries, travel to eight, nearly nine degrees of Aries, retrograde back, re-enter Pisces October 28th, 2022, go back to 28 degrees of Pisces and come back into Aries December 20th, 2022. So yeah, a lot of dates there. But again, this is the waves of energy, okay? The waves coming in and out, the waves working with us. It also feels like a balancing between the feminine and the masculine energies. As the Pisces is the feminine and both Aquarius and Aries are the masculine. So we're going to be feeling this sense of I'm trusting and I'm doing. I'm believing and I'm following. I'm working with this and I'm doing nothing. So there is a balancing energy that's also prominent here too. So I hope that this has given you some good things to think about and consider as we experience the Jupiter and Pisces energy, how it's going to help clear out and cleanse energies from last decade, as well as giving you some strength of what to believe and trust in yourself and in your life now, as well as trust and work with spirit in a very intentional and conscious manner. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. I so appreciate your energy and presence. It's a joy to connect with so many of you through this language of astrology. And I will be back with another podcast episode every Monday and Wednesday. And in terms of my books, yes, I have over 10 books published. Uh, They are on Amazon and across all bookstore distribution sites. And you can also find out more about them on my website, mollymccord.online or consciouscoolchic.com, which was the website I started way back in 2011. So thank you for joining me, my friends. I wish you a beautiful day ahead, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon through this podcast.